Some of you might recognize me from Sherwood, um, the weird English woman uh, asking lots of questions. <laughs> um, so my name is Alice um, and I'm from the UK and I have been a radical climate activist now for 13 years. I got radicalized in the student movement of 2010 against uh, the rise in tuition fees, but I've been campaigning on the environment since I was a teenager. Um, in, a, in a capitalist way, in a very tame capitalist way when I was a teenager. Um, so I am part of an organization called Reclaim the Power in the UK, and we fought the struggle against fracking for seven years until we won in 2019. And we've had a bit of a dip uh, during the pandemic. <coughs> Sorry, I have a cough. <coughs> Um, and we are now going to change to struggle against biomass because as we have won the struggle against coal in the UK, um, there has been a transition from burning coal in um, coal-fired power stations to generate electricity to burning wood, which gets imported from the southern parts of the United States, which gets clear-cut and burnt, which if you know... Um, the work of Andreas Malm that you mentioned, Lorenzo, with fossil capital, part of the reason why um, there was a transition from water to coal was because coal was actually had a lot more energy in, and so we're kind of going backwards into burning wood. So that's one organization. And then I'm also part of an organization called Plan C uh, in the UK, which is an anti-capitalist organization, and I guess they have slightly different theories of change, which I want to talk about in relation to the question of how capitalism incorporates green contradictions. I'm also part of the International Working Group for, of Endergelender um, in Germany, um, but I live in the UK uh, and participate remotely, um, like similar to what Cody does as well um, in that role. Um, and I just want to say that um, uh, I'm really glad that you guys have welcomed me um, with Sherwood and then here as well at the climate camp. I came to your first climate camp in 2019, which was great. Uh, and it's been really fascinating to see how the Italian climate movement has flourished. Um, and so sorry for any Germans here, but my love that I, I fell in love with the German climate movement a number of years ago. And it's more like an old partner that uh, is, is kind of like quite staid and like very routine now. Um, and I have fallen, fallen madly in love with the Italian climate activists. So thank you. <laughs> um, great work, comrades. I'm very impressed. Um, so, so the kind of the way in which green or the way in which capitalism incorporates its like uh, ecological contradictions is one that is really important to recognizing how we struggle against it. Um, and certainly we've seen the shift in recent years to, um, you know, capitalism talking a lot more about ecological things and um, having a very capitalistic uh, way of dealing with the ecological crisis. Um, and so... Um, in Reclaim the Power, our focus has mainly been against like um, fracking. So that has been with working with frontline communities that are have been resisting fracking in the local area. Um, whereas Plan C, it was it's been more of a case of recognizing the way in which capitalism tries to incorporate the ecological contradictions and the role of a class-based politics within that. So recognizing the role of the worker um, and seeing the, the role of the worker in the site of struggle. So um, one of the things that we did recently um, over like a year ago now was to organize a big sign up for a non-payment strike of the increase in gas and electricity prices called Don't Pay. And that was inspired by um, the poll tax riots in the UK, 
where the Thatcher government at the time was going to introduce uh, a tax, a flat tax on people in the UK, and there were riots against it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, and also was inspired by rent strikes that have been happening in, in recent years in the UK, but also as well by the um, movement in Italy, the, uh, and I've got to get this right. Yes, the auto reduction movement in Italy. Um, and so there was the concept of like, how can people that are being actively impoverished by the increase in energy prices, by the increase in gas and electric, and, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and are actively impoverished, they can't really go to a local community fighting against uh, fossil fuel extraction, or they can't go to a climate camp, but what they can do is say, we're not going to pay for the gas and electricity. Um, and so we were aiming for a sign up of a million people by the 1st of October last year. We didn't get a million people, but we got 250,000 people saying that um, they would, if there were enough people, they would not pay their gas and electricity bills when they increased on the 1st of October last year. And that, in combination with um, a number of intense problems that uh, the Prime Minister at the time was facing helped destroy her particular government in the UK. So we had, after Boris Johnson was ousted from power, uh, we then had Liz Truss for one month. For one month, but she didn't do very well because she had, and her um, very like, far right, very like pro-capitalist uh, colleagues really wanted to push um, the deregulation of um, lots of aspects of capitalism, trying to um, decrease taxes that companies had to pay. And so began that and the pound, even though it was doing very poorly against the euro, fell even more and the pound plummeted in the, in the world market. And this happened at the beginning of the month that she was in office. And um, then there was the uh, our payment um, strike, don't pay, the don't pay strike um, really scared them. And we had leaks from um, some of the civil service in central government uh, saying how they were scared of what, were gonna, what was, would happen if this many people refuse to pay their gas and electricity bills. And um, the government was briefed by E.ON, one of the big energy companies in the UK, um, um, to, uh, to stop um, this action from taking place. So they were really, really fearful of this. Um, there were lots of other factors as well that helped oust Liz Truss, but also another large one was the um, way in which the anti-fracking movement had over the seven years really solidified the public con consciousness against fracking. Um, and so it got to the point through our action with climate camps regularly each year, with supporting the local community, with doing direct action, economically targeted direct action of the, of the fracking industry, we were able to really disrupt the economic activities of the industry. And we were also able to take away the public license um, in the public consciousness around fracking to the point that when Liz Truss came into power after Boris Johnson left and she said, um, we are gonna bring back fracking after the moratorium that happened a couple of years before as a result of our campaigning, there was a big rebellion um, from her backbench MPs. And it was this perfect storm that helped destabilize her premiership and remove her from power and then start the leadership election again with the Conservative Party. Um, and I guess what's important to say then in relation to the way we see um, 
how capitalism tries to incorporate the ecological kind of basis of things, the, the universalizing factor between these two organizations is recognizing the way in which capitalism is ecocidal, so there's the ecological element, but it's also patriarchal, so there's the sexist and there's the misogic, mis mis misogynistic element of capitalism. It's also racist, so there's the racialized way in which capitalism functions. Uh, but the universalizing factor amongst all of those different sites of struggle against capitalism is, of course, capitalism itself. Um, and so um, the kind of way in which this has formed our politics has been to have a very intersectional approach. Um, so with Reclaim the Power in 2019, it was very much on the basis of our camp in 2019 was about how to connect the climate struggle, which had been very historically very white, very middle class in the UK. How do we connect the climate injustice with migrant injustice and racialized injustice. Um, and we had the most diverse climate camp that we've had in the UK as a result from very proactive, solidaristic work going on. And then the same for with Plan C, how do we create like a class-based politics? And I guess um, I wanted to, I don't think I have much time, but um, the aspect of the way in which things have shifted in terms of the consciousness around climate change is, um, has had a, a, an effect with how to reach out um, to workers and how to do the solidaristic work of um, building the ecological struggle um, alongside the workers' struggle in the UK. And so Reclaim the Power, we come from a history of climate camps um, where we had the first climate camp in the world in the UK in 2006. And for many years, it was fighting against coal in the UK. Um, and at the, the climate camp in 2008, there was very active work with um, the workers' movement um, that was being decimated um, as a result of um, the Thatcher policies of the 80s and the 90s. <coughs> and there was a person from the, from the workers' movement who had been involved in the coal struggle um, coming to the climate camp and saying, coal is our past and is our future. So a real disconnect or a real divergence of where we see the ecological in our politics. And that was in 2008. Whereas today, now in the UK, the Durham Miners Gala, which is the kind of uh, group that represents the um, kind of historic uh, coal uh, workers movement in the UK now says coal is our past but not our future and so that change in consciousness is really important to how we can connect across those different sites of struggle and something that's been really exciting recently in the UK is that a survey happened of workers in the North Sea in oil and gas and 81% of them didn't want to work in oil and gas anymore. And so that is a really dramatic shift from where the workers' consciousness was around ecological politics historically to where it is today and the kind of inroads that the ecological and the climate movement has had in raising the consciousness to the point that workers themselves in fossil, the fossil fuel industry, in oil and gas, in the North Sea, don't actually want to be working in oil and gas and in the fossil fuel industry anymore. Um, and a lot of that is down to ecological reasons and a lot is down to the brutality of the working conditions as well. And as Mark says, capitalism destroys the soil and the worker. So it's about recognizing that. And I feel like I've gone over time, but um, I, so I won't talk about some of the land-based struggles that have been happening in the UK as well as around climate change um, uh, in response to what you're going to say about uh, land-based struggles in France. Um, so I shall leave it there. But yeah, it's about the intersectionality, connecting the struggles 
to mean that we universalize the struggle and are much greater than the sum of our parts in creating the maximum leverage against capitalism.